The doctrine in Answers for New Christians is the thing that really excites me the very most about it because there are lots of children's resources that are flashy and cool looking, but one of the glaring problems that I had with most resources for new Christian children was the fact that it was watered down or lacking in proper doctrine. So I will tell you there is a statement of faith on our website um, AnswersForNewChristians.com There's also a statement of faith on SalvationKids.com and you can see where we come from on this but we are mainline evangelical with a strong Baptist leaning. We believe in baptism by immersion. And let's just start at the beginning and I can tell you about the doctrinal points that we emphasize in this book. The first one is about creation. And this is an important point because many children's resources start at the point of salvation or they start in telling about Jesus and children have a real problem understanding sin. When I began this project and started discipling the children I noticed that the big thing that so many of them did not understand was that they were a sinner and why they needed a Savior and that is the very foundation of salvation. So we start in the garden explaining why reviewing why we all need a savior and you will notice that there are dinosaurs in this garden because God made the dinosaurs just like all the other animals and he made us from the dust of the ground so that's the first important point of doctrine then we move on to the substitutionary sacrifice Jesus was our substitute but if you don't understand the substitutionary death of Jesus, you are missing the point. So this starts back in the Old Testament talking about the lamb that was sacrificed. And then later on, it moves on to tell about how Jesus was the lamb of God. Then we go on, and here is talking about being born again. And, oh, I missed an important doctrinal point, which comes right before this, which is about Zacchaeus. And here is where we discuss repentance. And this is where so many children's resources fall short, is they will have children repeat a prayer or something of that nature, and they never discuss the fact that he or she needs to repent of their sin, and that this needs to be a lifestyle and an ongoing process. Not that they're ever going to lose their salvation, but in order to keep themselves right with God, repentance is necessary for the Christian, and all Christians must have a repentant heart. So we do teach this. And here's Jesus dying for our sins and this is the risen Lord and then we talk about the ascension and how he's coming back and this is the actual these two pages are the salvation pages that tell lead a child through the process of how to actually pray a prayer and be saved but it's not done in a way to encourage a child to repeat certain words and Children are admonished that repeating words does not save anyone, that they do need to mean what they're saying in their heart for God to save them. Now, the next, this is about the family of God, and it shows people from all over the world who are in the family of God. Now, the Bible teaches that once you're saved, that nothing can snatch you out of the Savior's hand. And... Answers for New Christians does teach that once you are saved, you cannot lose your salvation. And that's why I'll just add here that after we started teaching this class, we did not have a problem with some children going forward in the church service at the invitation time over and over and over again because they knew that they didn't need to be saved again just because they had sinned. What they needed to do was repent and get their heart right with God again. 
but that he had not given them up. We do discuss the principle of adoption, how when you're saved, God adopts you. And people who adopt babies don't give them back just because they messed up. And here's the doctrine of the church. Why, why do we go to church? Why do we give our offerings? Why do we serve God? It's not to gain our salvation. It is to say thank you to God. It's God's plan for us to help us grow and to be healthy Christians. And here's the doctrine of the Word of God. Why do we believe the Word is true? How was the Bible put together? It's a very brief primer or an overview, just another little brick in the foundation of your child's life. Why we believe the Bible is God's Word. And here starts the section on baptism. And we do teach baptism by immersion for people who are old enough to know what they're doing and have decided on their own, not necessarily on their own, but the Holy Spirit has drawn them to Himself and then they have made a decision and repented of their sin and they're ready to be baptized. And here's a picture of a little boy being baptized. And here's a little girl having her quiet time. We teach children how to begin to grow in Christ. And one of those ways is to spend time with the Lord every day, or as often as possible. And this is about why we go to church. If going to church doesn't save us, well then, shouldn't we just stay home? Well, no, because God tells us that He doesn't want us to forsake this habit of assembling together. And this explains the Lord's Supper. What do the different elements of the Lord's Supper mean? And why you should wait until you're old enough to understand these things to partake of this. Now at the very end we have something very important and it's called the Who is a Christian test. And this little quiz is designed to see if the children understood. If they really got it that they are a sinner and they need a savior and if they really understand that being baptized isn't what saves them there's some tricky questions in here to see if we can trip the children up and if we do trip them up then we know that we probably we need to go back and reteach certain points before the child is baptized sometimes if a child misses a lot of these it's a clue that this child is, needs to grow up a little bit before we proceed with baptism let's just take number four. Mr. Jones is a good person. He gives money to poor people and recycles all his trash. Does this make Mr. Jones a Christian? Cody wanted to see the preacher. During the invitation time in big church, he went forward and shook the preacher's hand. Does this make him a Christian? So, that's an overview of the doctrine contained in Answers for New Christians. And I encourage you to think about getting this resource for the children that you love.